Hey guys, this is your friend Maynard from Civil Center and I welcome all of you back to our channel and another video on column positioning. So friends, in today's video, we'll show you how to position columns in a building plan. So uh, we'll discuss about some of the basic concepts of the column positioning and then we'll place the columns in this actual plan. As you can see, this is the uh, ground floor plan and this is the first floor plan. So to begin with, let's uh, discuss about uh, some of the concepts of the column positioning. So, so uh, before you know the assigning of the columns, we need to understand uh, some of the aspects of the uh, structural analysis and structural design, so that we can you know do this column analysis or column positioning properly. So uh, let us just uh, have uh, this. Let this be a slab, and we have like four columns in this particular slab. So four columns we are making here and let some beams connect these four columns. So by the way, looking from the top view, and we'll just make this four columns and beams. So the columns and beams are ready. This is a slab. Now there is a theory called uh, yield line theory. Yield line theory, uh, which states that the any load which you know acts on the particular slab is distributed in a particular manner. So we'll do not go into the details of this. We'll just check out the uh, distribution pattern. Change the color, and this will be the load distribution pattern here. So what this suggests is, as you can see, this is the load distribution pattern according to yield line theory and now, what this suggests is that the load on the slab is divided into four parts. This particular load is taken by this part, two columns. This particular load is taken by this column and this column. Similarly, this particular load is taken by this column and this column. So the load distribution is done accordingly. So now, based on this, we can, can have an idea how the load is transferred and how to place the columns. So basically, for any structure, like for if, if you are sitting on a chair or if you are uh, working on a table or a bed, then for then the four pillars or the four legs of the bed or the chair are your columns. So any structure can be, you know, we can have four number of columns in any structure, but the sizes of the particular columns can be more. So that's why we tend to, you know, place columns in such a way that we achieve uh, economical design because as you know the objective of any structural engineer is to achieve your safe economical and aesthetic design so for that purpose we are you know placing columns in different positions so now initially let's uh, take into account some of the rules of some basic guidelines which we can follow in column positioning so first guideline or thumb rule you can say it is that the distance between two columns can be in between or you can sh like should be should be in between your 10 feet to 16 feet. So what does this mean? And like, uh, can can we place columns more than 16 feet? Yes, we can. Obviously, we can place columns more than 16 feet distance, but the size will be more. So, you know, after the analysis, we will see that the size of the column, which for which uh, for making the structure a bit more. So that's why we can, you know, have like an initial guideline for placing the column, and we'll also you know show this in during uh, placing the columns in the plan. So the, this is the first point. The second point can be the alignment of the columns should be the same. So as you can see, the load is distributed like this. So I'll place one column here and the vertical alignment like this, this line and this line should be, and as far as possible, we'll try to keep the alignment of the columns in the same line. And the third point uh, which we can you know, take into account is that the position of the beams 
should be taken into account. Position of the beam should be taken into account while column positioning. So you have, have to, by looking at the plan, you have to first determine what will be the position of your beams, and as per that, you have to, you know, decide the position of your columns. So the fourth point which we can keep is that, and the thumb rule for every 80 to 100 square feet, there will be one column. So suppose you have a, a thousand square feet plan and uh, if anyone asks you how many columns will there, you can say approximately there are thousand by hundred that is, you know, 10 columns, it can be plus minus two plus minus four, it can be but for a rough idea you can use this particular points. So now let's just put these points into application in our plan. So we'll just share the screen here and okay, so we have this plan. So first day during a structural analysis and design, what we do is that we assume a particular size of the column. Let's uh, do for the 20 or 20 or 10 inch to 10 inch column. So we'll, uh, we'll, uh, we'll assume that size, we'll place the particular size of the columns in uh, this plan. And after we do the structural analysis, then we can decide what will be the size of the column. After uh, I can do the structural analysis and design any software like Tecla Structural Designer, Strat, ETAPS, or any other software. So let's take a column here in this plan and let's place it like this. So this is uh, this is one particular column. Now we uh, we will we'll check the distance between these two because we need there will be a beam like this. So before, if you want, you can also you know create the uh, beams. So one beam, I'll, I'm using a single line for the representation. So one beam will go like this because every, beha, below every particular wall you need a beam. So this is the first floor. So I'm just uh, assigning the position of the beams. Obviously, we need uh, whole beams. You know along the outer sides so i'll make the this beam first and this beam all all throughout will have and this obviously will have this beam and then the internal ones let's look at the internal ones then for the internal ones we'll have a beam here that is we are considering we'll have a secondary beam here We'll have another beam here. And this is the staircase. So we'll have another beam here. And a secondary beam here. Probably another secondary beam here. And another beam we'll have here. And another one will be here. So this will be the position of the beams as per the plan here. Now we can place our columns. So the next column let's place here now. This distance between the two columns, if I place the column here to 14 feet, and now I have the option of placing the columns. I can place the column like this here, or I can place the column along the kitchen. So, what is the difference? If let's uh, just select this and move this here. So, since this is uh, minimum size of the beam is a uh, TMM, and the wall will be 125 mm. If, it, if it's an inch, then it's a 10 inch column and this is a five inch wall. So the five inch portion of the one type of portion will be visible in the, in the depending upon where we place our columns. So if I place the column here, so the half of the portion of the beam will be visible in the kitchen. So like this, you can decide based on the aesthetic appearance, where do you want the particular column position so the beam, what uh, beam is not visible for a, for a particular room. Uh, however, if you give false selling, then the, the beams will not be visible at all. So, so this distance between two uh, columns is 14 feet, which is okay, which lies between our range of 10 to uh, 14 feet. Now, this distance is 15 feet by 5 inch. So, we'll give this uh, column here. This also satisfies our range. Now, the next beam we goes here is this one. We can give this a secondary beam because the distance between these two is 3 feet 7 inch, which is less than 10 feet. So, we'll not give any column here. We'll uh, do this as a secondary beam. Next line, next alignment, let's uh, place it here. So here we have to place, since it is staircase, so this is, this is another special case. Staircase, we have to place columns along the, it's preferable to place columns along the four corners of the staircase. We have to do that in case of the staircase. So having done that, the next column we can place along this line to keep the same alignment. 
So here we'll place the column. Now, the next column, if we place here, then the doors will not be possible. We have to shift the doors. So sometimes in the work, during this time of structural design, structural engineers have to make certain changes or suggest certain changes to the architect if the architect made the, made the plan uh, that uh, you know this will be preferable. So uh, we want to place the column here because as you can see the distance between these two is 40 feet and if you don't give uh, this column here then the distance between these two columns will be 40 feet plus uh, around uh, 6 feet uh, 20 feet or 21 feet this distance will be so we can give this it will, it will, it will be possible but this, since this distance will be large then the size of this column and this column will be more so we don't want that so that's why we'll give a column here if we give a column here We'll just do a brick wall, uh, like a rough brick wall here of 10 inch brick wall, and then we'll shift the door here. And uh, this door also will shift a little bit there. So, by shifting the doors a little bit, we can, uh, you know, actually place the uh, pillar here. So, that thing we can do uh, by you know, achieving some uh, changes in the actual plan. And the next column, as you can see, this particular uh, length, as you can see, this 14 feet 4 inches. So 14 feet 4 inches length is there, so which lies within our range. Uh, we don't need to give any column here because this 6 feet 11 inch less than 10 feet. So let's let's give a column along this line, this one. Or now you can see the beam is coming along this, so we'll just place the column here. It will better place the column here along this line. So one column here, another column here. Now the distance between this is. Uh, one, one beam will go like this and the distance between these two is 40 feet 5 inches so if you don't give a uh, column here then the distance will be large 40 feet 5 inches plus around uh, uh, 20 or 21 it will be so if we give a column here so the distance is 40 feet 5 inches now the option the distance between these two is less than 10 feet it's around uh, 5 or 6 feet but we don't have any option here since we want to give you know a separate columns for our staircase it is better for the design of the staircase and also for the headroom portion so we'll give one column here another another, another here and uh, let's give another column here that will be along this line same line same alignment another here so now what are the number of columns which we have placed as you can see one two three four five six seven 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. So 14 columns were placed and the area is 1334. So it's around uh, you know one column per more than a little bit more than one, one column per hundred square feet, which is okay. So this uh, in this video we are making uh, made an effort to you know uh, you know uh, communicate with you some aspects of the column positioning. So we had you know just given some brief thumb rules for the column positioning here. We can uh, revise the steps, that is the distance between the two columns can be between 10 feet to 16 feet, which we have done. Alignment of the column should be the same line. The position of the beam should be taken into account, which we did already before, you know, by getting, before getting the plan, after getting the plan, we had, you know, already marked the position of the beams and that it was easier for us to place the columns. And for every 80 to 100 square feet, there should be one column, that is a brief uh, thumb rule. So this spelling is wrong. So this is a brief uh, thumb rule. So we can, uh, we also had checked according to that also. Like if we had provided, you can check, okay, uh, had I provided too, too many columns, which is not required, you can check using this. So these are the basic uh, thumb rules and along uh, which you can follow for if you're a beginner uh, in the column positioning part. And after you place the columns, then uh, you can, uh, you can, you know, uh, trial and error uh, with your own uh, column positions and you can design in you know, software suppose i am placing the i am taking a plan i am placing the columns and i have designed in tecla or any other structural design software and then check what are the sizes of the members if the sizes of the members are economical then my column positioning is correct otherwise i can change them and uh, then uh, you know check whether any any better results are coming during the structural design so like this you can play around with this uh, column positioning part so hope you like this video and uh, if you are if you are new to, to our channel then uh, do subscribe to our channel because we bring uh, to all of you guys uh, some awesome content on civil engineering and we try to uh, guide uh, to, with you to you uh, the practical concepts as far as possible